Hey Liron here, let me show you how I paint people using a very direct approach taken as a snippet from one of my live streams without all the blabber. I hope you enjoyed this one. What I'm going to show you now is I'm just going to paint, for example, this person top to bottom and just follow what I see and try to be as accurate as I can. But if I'm not, it's not a big deal. So what I like to do is I'll try and mix something close, but not perfect. I'm going to use a lot of um, neutral tint here just to mute and darken bit of yellow to neutralize this whole thing. And here's what I would do. I'll just paint a shape of shadow. So here it goes like that. And around here, right? And look at what happens. We're gonna already do the edges too, so like this. And that's a good approach if you have a strong contrast photo that you can just rely on. And then I'm going to switch over to uh, the uh, face. That's going to be a dark skin tone in the shadow. Slight skin tone, but in the shadow. So there we go. With a bit of a highlight there, or a few highlights actually. And we can go back and do the um, mid values afterwards. That's the thing with this approach. Now I do need a bit of yellow because right now it's too red. Going around that highlight down here. And covering everything but the sunglasses, the glasses, sorry. That's the only thing that stays a little lighter here. And then I'm going to smooth out. And I know it looks strange, but don't worry. It's going to work. I'm going to smooth out this edge here. And you see how it kind of starts working. Now, if I bring in a bit of dark paint, I can get a few of those shadows on the first go if I want to. You don't have to. That's an extra step. But I just want to show you. Some of these shadows can be put in the very first time. Or you can use not as dark of a color, but a slightly darker mix. It will still uh, work like that. Lower lip, it's really annoying. Let's fix it like that. And then of course there are some shadows on the bottom here like this. And now look at what we're gonna do. We're going to continue this directly onto the blue of the shirt. That's the thing. You want to keep the flow. And I can hold it at an angle if I want to. And we're going to keep the flow. And these colors are still quite muted. Okay. Bit of a shadow here. Well, let's get rid of it. I s stuck it together. That was a mistake, actually. Because if I have an emergency and I need to get it off, it takes a long time. So here we go. Now you could already go into the darks. If you really want to, you can really work um, in one go. So let me show you. Just go into the darks like this. You start placing them in. And look at how I'm working with no angle almost. And it still works out okay even without too strong of a flow. And look at how this thing is going to define the shape of the shirt uh, by providing a dark backdrop. And it's kind of a similar process to what we've done earlier, but we're just following the light and shadow from top to bottom and kind of filling it in. And that's going to be a shadow, and that's going to be a shadow here, and that's going to be a shadow underneath it. And let's even not think too much about the edges for now. Uh, and just kind of get some shapes in. And then you see this is, this shadow is already on the uh, hand. So let me do this. Sorry, second guy. <laughs> we'll have to, for now, obstruct you. Get a bit of warmth in there. It doesn't have to be accurate again. And just put that. Let the two shapes touch. That's okay. And then look at if we actually want to put in the, the hand in one go, that could be interesting. So let's try it out. Still quite light in some spots. 
and there are all the um, creases and wrinkles and all that that you want to paint around. Could be a bit challenging, but look at how slowly an impression is created. And that actually works. And maybe this is in the shadow. And then let's connect it to the shadow, right? So this is a more of a free, loose kind of approach, right? And it works. It works really well, I think. Now a bit of blue. Yet again, for this area, that's quite a nice little cool shadow. But notice how still everything is muted. That's the thing that, that a lot of people miss. Um, everything, the colors, you, you'd be really, you'd have to work really hard to find a very bright blue or very bright um, whatever, you know, because it's just unnatural colors. Well, let's get this side of the blazer, whatever. And I'm going to do it differently this time. I'm going to put the mid value. So do these experiments. It will really help you. I'm going to put first that mid value. May look quite strong, but it's actually okay. And then once I have that in, let me put some of the shadow. I'm going to use some of my dark paints. Get a bit of that shadow. And you see here? And I'm okay if some of it moves or blends too much or, you know, whatever. That's fine. That's the price of doing this kind of wet and wet, right? And then let's add, oops, I touched the paint. Let's add a bit of a shadow under the buttons. See, there are so many ways to approach painting such a thing. Um, and I would just encourage you to try as many as you can, right? We can get all of this in one go, actually. All of the lower area, whatever, the pants and the everything. Get it wet and wet like this. Uh, a few small wrinkles, details, whatever. Can use a bit of that warmth, kind of golden pink color for the um, belt, maybe brown. Let's go for more brown. See, sometimes I get lost in the mixing too, and I'm like, what color is this? Just use a test paper and you should be good. I'm gonna add a bit more red to it and a bit more water. And just paint carefully around the buckle. I think the buckle I'm going to leave white for now. There are just an endless ways of tackling these kinds of subjects. And I just want to encourage you to try. Go for it. See, I'm taking a much freer, looser approach here. And it still works. Let's get the blue on the other side. We didn't get that quite in yet so see this here shadow under the collar like that and then here too and look at how good this looks a bit of these small details shadow under the button you can get as many of the details as you want or you know keep it very light but but you see how that works? Now, with a bit of background, this could become a much more enhanced scene. So by adding, say, a darker background behind his sleeve here, that's a little darker, you start to give it meaning. See this? And then maybe you want to switch to a bit of a cooler color as you move away. So let's add a bit of ultramarine. It's going to turn it gray, like so. And if we add a bit more, we're going to start turning it blue. See this? It's just a very fun way to paint. I think I'll have to redraw and repaint this because I do. I did want to paint the full scene, but just because of time constraints. Um, keeping it a little simple, or I could just continue with this. Um, but in any case, you see, and then you can play with the contrast and make it stronger where things are darker or lighter or whatever, right? To, to make it a little more impactful. 
this, one, two, right? And we still haven't gotten that mid value here. We can just get it in one go and paint everything in one go. That's okay too. You see a bit of that here, let it touch. Let it blend into the background. That's also a beautiful effect, right? Let these two shapes blend together completely. You know, you have the freedom. You have the freedom to paint realistically however you want. And this is me working fast. If I would work as slow as in the previous example, which you can see again here, I would have gotten it to be even closer, right? Um, I think I'm missing actually a bit of red here in the, in the face. If I could do another go at it, mix a bit of a pure red. And look at how I can push the color of the face to be a little more red by glazing. That actually works. Watercolor is transparent, but just glazing over it makes it a little more red. Maybe you push it closer to the accurate color that way by glazing slowly, right? Let's get rid of some of the white of the sun, of the sunglasses, just the glasses. Let's see what we have here. We have a bit of a darkness and then a bit of these lines going over it and here as well. You see, and you can start to kind of get rid of it, carve out a shape, make it look like glass, put in a bit of a, let's see here, a bit of a dark black paint here while this is still a little wet and this could lead to very interesting effects you know maybe a bit of a darkness for the eye here which we didn't get too much into uh, there is a bit of a darkness inside the mouth so something like this right if it's too strong you can lift some of it your finger or whatever way you want to do this and you can slowly get it closer and closer and closer. In fact, I see that within that um, lighter area, there is a bit more details that I kind of missed. So let me get that, you know, I'm really, I'm really absorbed, but in a second, I'll go back to the chat and see what you're saying and we'll kind of move towards maybe wrapping it up. But the more you can get these details in, the more accurately you can do this, uh, in theory, the end result is going to be, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Didn't even get the color of the hat here. There we go. See, without even taping the paper, with barely any angle, you can get some very nice results. Um, we didn't even put the darkest darks down there. Let's see here. See, I'm just, now I'm mixing random stuff. Uh, but here we go, a bit of that dark shadow here. We'll go a long way. See, there's one here next to the hand that could be important, just to define the shape of the hand like that, see? Um, but yeah, now I'm really <laughs> just kind of winging it and going fast at it. I don't want to. Uh, I'd rather stop here. Honestly, if you're looking for a quick win, just to, you know, uh, get a painting done and have it look good. Uh, that's one of the best ways. Just put it, put the values you see there. You can always worry about those uh, middle values later on. If you have, so one thing I try to give myself the permission to do is give yourself permission to start from whichever section of the painting you feel like starting from. And that's actually huge because maybe you see something in the scene that really inspires you and makes you want to paint it. So why not use that energy and motivation and, and paint the thing you want when you want to paint it, you know? Uh, that's That's been huge for me, just giving myself that kind of permission. And then the second thing, and I see this all the time, use more water. This is watercolor we're talking about. Use more water, it needs the flow. So I hope this helps. Here is the final result on the screen. A lot of people want these processes consolidated without all the fluff and the chat and all. It makes a lot of sense. I'll be doing more of these. Don't forget to check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course if you want to learn exactly how to paint like this. I show this exact same technique uh, direct a la prima. And also let me know in a comment down below your thoughts and subscribe if you still aren't. I will see you in the next one.